Greetings, friends. My name is Pavel Stelmo, and now we'll dive into the top news of this day. During the summit of the International Crimea Platform, President of Ukraine Volodymyr Zelensky announced his intention to establish the Baltic Black Sea Defense Union. To neutralize the Russian threat, it is necessary to enhance not only the military potential of the EU countries and their military-industrial complex, but also to create new associations that are able to properly respond to current challenges and threats. Large supranational associations of Europe, created in the 20th century, no longer fully meet the requirements of the time and should be complemented by more flexible security formats. Ukraine is negotiating with NATO countries that have access to the Black Sea and have already felt the consequences of Russia's transformation of the Azov Black Sea area into a war zone. Diplomats have been tasked with preparing a security alliance of the Black Sea countries. Not contrary to NATO, don't think so. It is jointly with NATO countries. So that we have a joint defense of the Black Sea and Azov coast against Russian aggression. I would even say the Azov, Black Sea and Baltic space. The Baltic Black Sea Defense Union should become a guarantor of the territorial integrity and security of Europe, which will be significantly strengthened after Ukraine's integration into its supranational structures. Political geography itself prompts such a reproachment. The countries of the region are united by a common past, and it is not only about being part of the Grand Duchy of Lithuania and the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, but also about joint history of the 20th century, the Second World War and Soviet occupation. We also have related cultures, from the Rusinian Skota in Vilnius and the Karaitis diaspora in Trakai to the surname Litvin as one of the most common in Ukraine. We also have common economic, demographic, security and political challenges, one of which is of course Russian war and possible aggression to other countries. German Foreign Minister Anna-Alena Baerbach called for an acceleration of the transfer of long-range Taurus missiles to Ukraine. Russia shows no signs of readiness to stop the invasive war against Ukraine. The Russian military do not cease attacking civilians and civilian infrastructure. One and a half years after the start of the full-scale invasion, Russian military capabilities are still quite significant. Long-range missiles are a prerequisite for Ukraine's victory over the aggressor state. We are talking with all partners. This is our principled position. It applies to both aircraft and long-range weapons. We need them in order to liberate our territory. We don't plan to use it against Russian territory. This is a clear position expressed by the leadership of our country. Each time the decision of our partners to provide us with some principled position is accompanied by an internal procedure, internal consultation. Andrei Yermak, head of the Office of the President of Ukraine, in interview with Deutsche Welle. Taurus and Atacams missiles will effectively destroy Russian defensive fortifications, firing points and air defense systems. Following the provision of F-16 fighter jets, Ukraine also expects to receive long-range missiles compatible with them, designed to engage both mobile and stationary targets with a high degree of protection. Long-range missiles are crucial for reducing the material and technical support of the occupation contingent and the military potential of Russia itself. Delaying the provision of these weapons to Ukraine will give Russia more time to prepare for new offensives and delay the liberation of the temporarily occupied territories of Ukraine. The sooner necessary weapons are provided, the more lives can be saved. And I don't want to sound arrogant or tactless, but the West have already shown a delay in providing tanks and armored vehicles, due to which the Russians were able to mine almost the entire south and due to which the advance of the Ukrainian counteroffensive is much slower than it could be. However, as military analysts say, war is a daily change, so you have to react to the situation on the battlefield here and now. And our soldiers do it, in my opinion, successfully. However, with long-range missiles, it will be even faster. U.S. Senator Lindsey Graham called for regular elections in Ukraine in 2024, despite the martial law. Elections during martial law are impossible because they are directly prohibited by the Constitution of Ukraine. In the conditions of enemy control over a significant part of the territory of Ukraine, mass displacement of the population, in particular abroad, it is impossible to organize an honest and transparent expression of will. Holding elections is also objectionable for security reasons because large crowds of people are a target for Russian terrorist attacks. Holding elections in conditions of war contradicts the international standards of the OSCE, which are put forward 
for the electoral competition. But there is another option where the elections will be held. From the beginning of war, from February 24, 2022, Ukraine asked NATO and our partners to close the sky. So using this technique, we can hold elections by region. We are announcing elections, let's say, in the Karpatia region. The USA and NATO declared this region a no-fly zone and ensure this with their air defense or an anti-missile defense and aviation. Voting is safe, then we will move to the Lviv and ivano frankivsk regions. Similarly, the USA and NATO ensure that missiles do not fall on the heads of voters while the election campaign are voting and taking place. Then the next two, three regions in the same way. And at the last, Kharkiv, Sunmi, Chernihiv, Dnipropetrovsk and Saporizhia regions will also take part in the elections. Then the US election proposal would at least be fair. And yes, there is another possibility for the next elections in Ukraine to take place on time after the victory of Ukraine in the war. To ensure that elections in Ukraine take place sooner, the United States and partners can enhance military assistance to the Ukrainian defense forces. That concludes our today's video. Thank you for watching. Stay updated, subscribe to our UATV English channel for more news from Ukraine. Your support is that really matters. Goodbye.